things I realized was if we're making if we're doing holistic medicine if we're healing people holistically the methods that we use also have to heal the earth there's no use in us you know compartmentalizing everything and like importing organic peppermint from Australia for example or something like this you know the the footprint that that, ha that has is huge so it's about um, yeah, regenerating the earth and and helping them actually to get back to organic farming methods here. Which I don't like to even call organic farming methods, it's just Natural. actually the way it was always done. <laughs> Until the Green Revolution in 72. So like, you've just got these little, they're hot water springs just popping up everywhere. People like, places like this, for me they represent a place where nature provides everything including hot water i mean it's amazing so this was one of the uh this was one of the origin oh no it was just a one over was the first natural rice planted and now we're going back to we've converted a few other rice paddies but it's interesting you know people don't want to do it so you have to convert them from pesticide to from natural? the yeah basically the 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 package the that's, Mon, that's the, the symbol, Monsanto package deal that is the symbol that we're talking about yeah it's on the land it's in your body yeah it's in the economy yes that's it ahead. you have to detoxify the landscape from uh, what we've done to it yeah that's all part of it I mean um, my idea I mean because what I do is natural medicine so I I thought <laughs> The way to start it would be to start with herbs and then I realized that we have to purify the water supply so um, yeah natural progression is to convert this to organic I mean organic or natural farming yeah this whole area up to Jatilui was the only area where they were allowed to keep the heirloom rice to the heirloom rice yeah. got it so in the 70s i think it was 72 so the rice is what just all did, been distilled to one culture one variety yeah it's the balinese red rice mm -hmm. that was always and then there's the sweet rice <clears throat> and um so are you also seed banking yeah well that's the idea thankfully there's actually the, it's readily available um, so we're not too desperate for seed, but I mean, once the whole ecosystem gets moving in, in that direction, the, the seed won't really be a big issue. And we, um, we're also looking at, we've been replanting, um, sort of heirloom fruit trees on a lot of the land to get that back in because now people don't eat the original fruit yeah is that a temple complex this is the temple so would called. you would you bring students there we do yeah i uh the retreats are very much focused on spiritual connection so we pray at many there's so many temples around here it's amazing um and they all represent different aspects this one is called Pura Batu Panas, which means hot stone. Yeah. It's and gorgeous. It's, and you see, this is interesting. There's no walls. These are how the original temples in Bali were created. 
Everywhere else, in most other places in Bali, they, they're walled com complexes. A little bit younger than Batukaro because the legend is that this represented one of, one of the children of the deity of Batukaru, mm. who came here and meditated. And it was surrounded by hot, I guess it was the hot water, and it was, which is why it's called um, Batupana, so hot stone. So there must be what, like sulfur baths? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one right healing. next to it. Yep, yeah. This is one of the most famous in Bali. And this is a very interesting little temple here. There's uh, prehistoric lingams. So what was probably here was a uh, 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 Shiva, um, let's say a cult of Shiva. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they don't even know how old these are. I mean, they're, they're definitely over 800 years old, um, possibly older. So there must be similar Buddhist remnants too, or only only Hindu? Well, so far there's only Hindu that they've found. Mm. But um, for some reason, there's been a lot of interest from various Buddhist, uh, not organizations, but people, people, you know, Buddhists in general are very attracted to this place. You see, um, there's, there's three lingams just lined up. They've left them as they lay. Mm. And there's a Nandi as well, a bull. Mm. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> the air. <laughs> wow, that is stunning. Yeah, I'm getting goosebumps. I am too. <laughs> just brought me down to my feet for a yeah. second. Yeah. I think, I think yeah. one thing that I feel here, and I think that everyone who I've brought here is, this is nurturing. This is, this is real life. Mm. Um, you can live here with no external inputs. You've got everything. Everything's here. It may not be completely utilized, but that's the plan. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about a vision to create a center here that would be self-sustained and off-grid type, or? I have no vision. You have no vision? No. Mm -hmm. I just want to spend just, more time just here. More time here. <laughs> You're just drawn, attracted to the energy. It's but the I, right energy. Yeah, it's yeah. It's feeding something deep inside of you. Deep, yeah. You, you can, you know, when when I come here with with friends or groups, we just take our shoes off and we just walk around. I mean, I don't even need to do anything sometimes for the retreats, but we do. I mean, it's we just, end up. It's just it's, it's saying everything. Yeah, it's conveying everything. It represents to me, you know, that that um, that balance between which we call in Bali trihitakarana. It's like a threefold social um, way of life, which is the connection to the earth, the connection between people and the connection to the divine. And this is a place where, where you can live it in my, in my experience. I know we can, we should in theory be able to live it everywhere, but it just feels good doing it here. Yeah. And there's the mountain just behind us, shrouded in mist and clouds. On a clear day, you get three mountain peaks here. And Gunung Agung, over in the east. So this is, uh, is it this? No, no, this one. This is the one that we are doing with the natural farming. And again, it's is just- Is your partner's name Alex? Alex, yeah. And my brother is, is involved as well, mm -hmm. uh, but he's, he's in Germany at the moment. So this is one that we've converted. This is the, f the first planting. And this is just, this is owned by someone who's just said, use it. I mean, um, a family in Denpasar. So people have just come out of- Who know you and trust you. They're not just Yeah, I mean, don't doing... even, not, they don't, they hardly know me uh -huh. at all, actually. <laughs> I've met them twice <laughs> for a brief conversation and they, 
and they've allowed us to use this garden here, which is was our first herb garden. And um, so what do you think is happening in the mentality? They're just people are willing to surrender as long as because they respect the the proposition of returning to something sacred, something regenerative. Yeah, we, you know, for for me it feels like just. I don't know. They're just guy. There's no, there's no need, f even for. Um, we didn't even get to that discussion. It's almost. Uh, I just described what I'm doing, and they're like, okay, it's yeah. It's not just, conceptual. It's intuitive. It's intuitive. It's intuitive. It's intuitive. Yeah. They're Buddhists, actually, who own this. <laughs> they are. Uh, I think Tarawada. Mm -hmm. And when you're in this kind of, when you're in this energy, there's just a whole lot of generosity and and mutual respect that comes naturally. So this is the start of our first herb garden. Mugwort. I love mugwort. You know moxa? You have the to introduce sticks. me to the uh, properties of each of the plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there, that's just being planted, so it's not looking... We might do it up the top. Do you know this one? Plantago. Uh -huh. Plantago major. It's one of the uh, so is mugwort. They're universal herbs that grow everywhere in the world. You can find them everywhere. I think there's five, five plants that you can find on every continent. The mint growing up here. These flowers just go crazy. <laughs> the Clitoria ternatea, we call them chalang or talang. So I see us too, but I know, a man, says too. Yeah, we're just experimenting. I mean, I'm using aspects of biodynamic farming from from anthroposophy, permaculture, and then how it's just always been done. Mm -hmm. And this is more of a, these beds are um, mixed. So there's this kind of, what happened was when industrial farming came in, the monoculture, the monoculture yeah. mentality came. Yeah. And Big crops of soy or whatever, just yeah, depleting just the topsoil. Every, everything to, um, in, in one, fell swoop as they say but yeah we're just trying to get back this mixed kind of um multiculture mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's not just medicine it's food and ways yeah. of living and yeah it's all interconnected it's everything it's all interlinked. yeah one of the things i do in the gardens is we just forage and you because i mean this is great eating mm -hmm. the plantago and you know make salads and and um eat whatever we can from the land. This is a temple priest. One of my favorite guys here. Cool. Hello. Hello. Okay. Treating him for high blood pressure. Oh yeah? Yeah. I was just asking how he is, he's good. It's down. Because <laughs> these guys they don't use they don't go to the doctor. Yeah. First, they can't afford it. Yeah. And second, they don't really. They're like, Pfft. yeah. The access must be such a problem. I remember my last retreat. I, it was a lot of my homeopathic students, and I don't know how it happened. Word got around, and there was just this line of guys from the village who needed help. We needed help, <laughs> and we ended. And that was. Uh, everyone said that was the most rewarding part of the retreat. Oh, I bet because they. Oh, it's almost like open clinic, right? They can yeah. see you and see you work. 
Yeah. That's the best education. It is. There's nothing like it. Yeah, that's how I got my training. All the money I spent on being mm -hmm. in, in the academia was nothing compared to 20 years studying next to a master. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm watching looking. the interaction. That's that's it. That's the old way. That mentor yeah. Yeah. relationship. That's how knowledge really gets transmitted. Exactly. And all this stuff about books and exams. Oh my God. Books, exams, titles at the end of the day. Um, it's all that, that I've been asked many times to create a school for natural medicine. And to this, and you know, I, I was educated through conventional academia. And I had to really get that out of my head, you know, because I saw, well, I thought about myself and what you just said is that it's all about experience and, and seeing the real thing. So I'm someone who's really together. qualified though. I mean, someone yeah. truly qualified. And this is what you're doing like this holistic thing. It's not just about how someone thinks, it's how someone talks and someone how they touch for pulse or, and then also how do they live? Like I lived with my teachers. Yeah. I lived with them, I raised their family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you can't yeah. hide. It's all, it's all part there. of it. Yeah. Yeah, there's no one sort of getting up in the morning and putting their suit on and going to lecture. And that's a different person. This it's is a real a little, person. It's just a little box. Yeah. Yeah, so like just that moment there with the bike, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, he's the priest, but he's also got his muddy boots on. That's the thing here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, half of them are priests <laughs> and they're all out there. They're like building houses. Uh, he's going to feed his cows. Uh -huh. So I said, we're going to feed the cows, going to the rice field. Um, wow, this is magic. So this is oh, their, great. this is the main village quarter where everyone lives. Wait, 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 wait. This is so beautiful. This is so raw. This, yeah. is, this is the real thing. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. This is real body. So it's too long. King, I don't know. Yeah, when you're going to be here. Yeah. Okay, serang adik adalah serang jero jero man, ye 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 malay bos rika. This is another temple that we pray at, Pura Siwa or Shiva Temple. So a long time ago, and again, I, I can't even tell you this. There's nothing written. It's all handed down through the families. There was a holy man who lived here. And just up where our land is adjacent to that is a temple, which has the place where he attained moksha. Mm -hmm. And there is a, I don't know if, know if you'd call it um, monolithic, but it's a pile, it's like a cairn, uh, a bit like in um, Nepal, Tibet, mm -hmm. um, that commemorates the spot where he attained moksha and he, yeah, I yeah, where they pile the stones up. And so here's still a lot of the shrines are just, they're just stones or trees. Are we going um, there now? Yeah, we're going up near it. We can't go in because yeah. we haven't got, uh, we haven't prepared, yeah. but we, we can do it next time. I'm up, I'm ready for another, we call them Tirta Yatra. So yeah. every now and then, is there fire and water involved? Always. I mean, with the... With the As I told <coughs> you about that dream. Yes, yes. Yes, I mean, that, that dream is very interesting because that's... They're the two... I mean, I like to work with multiple elements. I'm working on um, putting together a 12-element system. Um, but definitely the, the five primary elements. They're always represented in any Balinese ritual. The um, flowers and the fruits for the offerings represent earth and then 
the incense and the we make like a homa obviously it's fire the holy water is water and the air is represented through the the sound through the bell of the priest and the mantra it's the same in the tibetan there are yeah. seven actually ah, they use seven or seven. eight that's interesting so three of water one for these are all offerings yes. are they offering are you talking about offerings? we're talking about offerings in the prayer coco coco i know this dog coco Abhishek, uh, you've had mm -hmm. whatever deity. Mm -hmm. do they do a Vajrasattva. I don't know if the same in mm -hmm. Vajrasattva is the practice of the purification deity. Okay. And then it comes with a mantra. Mm -hmm. And that clears the karma. Yeah. And then yeah. you can invite in the uh, the deity of your, your Ishtadeva. Yes. Whatever, whatever yes, your practice we have is. the same term, Ishtadevata. You know, this uh, Pakjaro, he, I really respect him because when he was the head of the village, he stopped a really huge development that was going to happen here. Uh, they were going to build a massive, a really big, like hectares and hectares they'd bought up. And it was actually a, a, a health retreat, but he, he knew there was something not right about this. And they, it turns out in the end that they were also planning to turn it into like a drinking water kind of production facility, which would have sucked all the aquifers dry. And I mean, he, he had to deal with, he had to deal with, they ended up using hired goons and hitmen to like Secure beat him up. Deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause if it was without his signature, it wasn't happening. And he held, he held it, and he nearly, he nearly didn't survive the process. I'm sure there's people in Ubud that's never even heard of this place. No, Look like really truly local people that have never heard of this place. A lot of a lot of Balinese have never heard of this place. Yeah. It's funny, it's like the storm's around us, <laughs> but not on top of us. So is some of the training that you provide mm -hmm. um, free for Indonesians or to the community, or is there a, a portion of your endeavor that ends up feeding back somehow into the local? system well mostly it's through um uh free free consultations free consultations yeah with the education um oh, look at these things oh my god uh, we made it just in time it's just here hello 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 emil kabar Boleh, Papa. Ya. Baik. Ya. Biasa. Oh, kan. Silakan. Ke beji dulu. Oh, ya. Ya. Nukat. Nah, nah. Minum, bikin teh. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's... I've had long discussions with my llama about it, the uh, use of social media versus mm. just yeah. staying off completely. It's a yeah. debate I have. Like, yeah. I know it's a pain in the ass in a way to have to be in front of the camera. On the other hand, it's just this tension. It's like there's so much being pumped that has no intrinsic value. Yeah. Just content. Yeah. It's empty. It's empty yeah. calories. Yeah, exactly. It's like junk food. And I, I think like some measured attempt to try to put something decent there mm. knowing that someone is going to capture it the right person with the yeah. right karma is going to yeah. is going to capture it they're going to be fed something yeah. of value yeah. it's like planting seeds yes someone's got to plant something decent exactly and it just happens to be that this is the infra this is the infrastructure that we're that dealing we with have, and, and as much as you don't want to participate in it at least the younger generation has no other alternative to reach them well yeah i've often had that debate with myself and i 
I just remember the inspiring things that I found there. And I, you know, the story of how I found you was I was on the plane yeah, on the way over know. here, mm -hmm. and I met your dad in a documentary film. That's right. He was yes. part one of a six-part series. Yes. And he yes. was walking through the streets, and you could tell yeah. was... it was a man of integrity. Yeah. Yeah. And you could just tell in his yeah. eyes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. From there, I found Jeez. Scott's video on YouTube of Trihirtar okay. Tirana. Yeah. Contacted you the next day. Yeah. I didn't reply. <laughs> 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 and then you contacted me. But like, <laughs> that's perfect, right? Because it's almost like, how bad do you want it? Like, how yeah, yeah. how invested are you? You know, like, how yeah. what does it mean to you? Are you are you just here for like a quick pick yeah. to take home some some little piece of fruit to take home, like mm. an I idealized object or something that you're going to pluck? And that's not my intention at all. Yeah. Like, y it's w it's whatever you want to share. And. I, I know I have an audience of sincere people that I've surrounded myself with. Yeah. They want, they're hungry to learn something of value. Mm. Mm. You know, like uh, they've been raised. Mm. You, you've invested in your community. They mm. want to keep studying. Mm. Mm. It, it may not be sizable, but who knows what, what, what your sister was saying is who knows when you're ready to broadcast a wider message, who's going to be ready. And after the yeah. pandemic, yeah. The, so the turn in consciousness is there. Yeah. Even, yeah, I think it's been a huge catalyst, hasn't it? Welcome to Taman Beji. Yeah, that's the temple where, wow. where the holy man attained moksha. Oh. Well, let's go pay respects first. Yeah, Even if it's at the doorway, and yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll do it properly, mm -hmm. but just something. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is virgin land. There was, um, they were just growing wood, like tree, these albicia trees that they grow for cheap wood. And I came up here one day on, a, on my second retreat and someone had come up and just felled everything and, and they actually stole it. Someone had come and stolen the trees. And I was like, oh, I've got to do something about this land because it's and they and they felled it and there were trees falling nearly on top of the temple and i thought nah and i i said it in you know just to myself uh, that yeah i'd like to be a steward of this land and um because it's directly on top of this incredible spring and i then heard that someone the wanted to buy it and the temple yeah someone wanted to buy it and build a villa and i was like ah oh, no 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 <laughs> So I'll do anything you, I can. Do you own this little yeah. piece here? Yeah. So it's protected. Yeah. Yeah, this is about as much as we'll build here. Nature works here. I think even if they wanted to, they couldn't build it. It just the stuff karma. would happen. The spirits. The, yeah, the land, the nature spirits. They're so, they're so present. Yeah. They're so present. They're everywhere anyway, but here, yeah, you can't mess around like, yeah. Yeah, I can get Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I've also planted tea here. Because I, um, with my brother, we, again, another intuitive moment, decided to, to he, he sent me a picture of this land of many years ago up in, Tumblingan, which is a beautiful place you'd like it there, right on a, a, a protected forest on a lake. And we planted tea. And I, it hadn't really been done in Bali before. And it really worked, yeah. Which is interesting because Indonesia's got some of the old, oldest non-Chinese tea gardens around. They, the Dutch had tea here well before the English had it in India. So, so they like Sri Lanka? Yeah. The Dutch, right? Uh, no, Sri Lanka was English. Oh, yeah, I used to be a tea tea guy for an Australian tea company. I wrote a history of tea, 
I still remember the Sh Sri Lanka was English because the guy's name was James Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> like the musician. <laughs> so I remember that. Did you say yeah. you worked for a tea company? Yeah. yeah, and I still have one actually. It's called Tea Craft. I, I ended up starting my own. My business partner's from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it, and you that's... still have it? You still run it? Still, I'm a silent partner. I founded it and set it all up. And Hong Kong is actually where I discovered tea. I mean, the spiritual side of tea. Mm. I, was, I was on Hollywood Road and a, a rainstorm like this came in and I just ran in the first door. Mm. And it was one of those, tea you know, houses? those tea houses with all the drawers and, all, and I was, it was like, um, yeah, yeah. I was just in there, I was like, whoa, whoa. So you happen to find like the one like spiritual thing in Hong Kong that <laughs> it's your karma. Yeah, yeah. I was so, and I walked and I was like, and the guy just comes up, he goes, sit down. And I sat down and I had an incredible, I still remember as a Hong Hong Dan Chong, Phoenix Oolong. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh my God, this is tea. What is this? This is like, this is a spiritual experience. <laughs> This is a religious experience, and um, and then I yeah I became obsessed with tea. That's actually how almost how I got into natural medicine. I was wondering, is there a lot of medicinal properties to tea? There are a lot. But you know, there's a also you stop taking tea because of the caffeine or something? No, I mean I still drink tea. You still drink yeah, tea. Yeah, if it's a, a a good quality, a good quality one. I mean I love I love mixing up some masala chai and stuff like that at home sometimes. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, the, some of the some of those oolongs and, and pu er is is incredible. They did a study on it. It's as effective as statins for cholesterol. Oh, amazing! So you could just switch from statins to pu er and you're off your drugs. I mean, but who knows about that? Not many well, that would be. So the. Uh the last few years I run pilgrimage and we try to go somewhere mm. we try to go somewhere where there's an authentic lineage so mm. we've been to Sri Lanka to uh, mm -hmm. the Atmastana or the eight great sites around Anuradhapura in the center mm -hmm. of Sri Lanka yeah. and then we've been to of course India to the Buddhist holy sites mm -hmm. and Nepal one day we'll go to Tibet mm -hmm. the idea is not just a journey, but these are real pilgrims. These are yeah. pilgrims that are want to participate in lineage, want to participate mm -hmm. in a, an old path back. Mm -hmm. Yes. And are committed. They're not going on a holiday. They're, That's right. They're trying yeah. to. They've already tasted the dissatisfaction. They've or they've already developed what they call in, t in Buddhism renunciation. Like there's yeah. there's no sense in carrying on the way we've been going on. We're ready to make a sacrifice. We're ready. We've already s established that it doesn't reveal or pay dividends in the way that it's marketed yes so one of the ideas is to come to bali mm. and mm -hmm. to java yes i was gonna ask if you're gonna go to java so the idea is healing in bali and uh Mm. And then the, mm. there's, there is an old lineage in Java around the Borobudur called yeah. the mind training tradition, the Lojung tradition that mm -hmm. was preserved in Tibet but has a, an Indian root in a teacher yeah. from the 10th century named Atisha uh -huh. and Ser Lingpa. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to bring a group to meet someone like you and to do a retreat in Bali based around healing. Mm. Yeah but then to also service the local community by offering a healing conference. Yeah. A conference yeah. where I would invite my Lama from Australia to come here to give the Abhisheka of the Medicine Buddha. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then you could introduce your lineage. Yeah. And then I could introduce some of the more uh, trauma, trauma-informed therapies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we could offer them locally free or whatever makes sense to people who are healers and yeah. But then, yeah. there, I mean, it, there, it could intersect so that the group gets exposure, more sustained spo exposure to you. But then there's something free. Mm. It's a beautiful idea. Mm. I don't know quite how it works. I'm just thinking out loud. Sure, but sure. like some way of um, 
offering something back to the local community because every single pilgrimage we run, we offer something back to the mm. host country. Yeah. So in Nepal, we sponsor the building of a nunnery or the restor mm -hmm. restoration of the nunnery or mm -hmm. something like that. There's some mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. idea of reciprocity. Yes. So the theme would be healing. The, L the Lama would come and give the Abhishek of Medicine Buddha. You could, you could introduce people to what you do here. Mm, mm, and they could have mm. a sustained three or four day retreat up here. Yep. And then there could be a component maybe down at Tirta or somewhere where mm. you could expand it so that medical providers, healthcare providers, people that are genuinely interested in yes. alternatives to the conventional modalities yep. could get some exposure. Or maybe it's a one day conference or a half day conference. Yep. We could have dialogue, we could have interdisciplinary yeah. dialogue. Yeah. And then the group would then continue on to Java to go to the Borobudur and yeah. some of the other sites to yeah. do more um, more of the lineage of Buddhism there. So that way yes. we would have oh, that's interesting. a couple of different modalities, something genuine, something based on healing. I mean, like your rituals, mm. your baths, the water, mm -hmm. the way that you the describe water. the water here as essential to the healing process. That's right. I mean, that in a day is a day-long workshop yeah. already. Yeah, yeah. But then you've got your herbs, and yeah. you've got is it Jiro? Jiro. Jiro. Yeah. You you could have a, some sort of ceremony. Mm, mm. Yeah. What we would usually do is an uh, a malukat, which is the water cleansing ceremony. We do that down at the spring here. We also actually do it in Iba. My father holds it. You should have this. On Iba. What's that? You should have a, 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 a cleansing ceremony with my father, maybe. I'd love, it. I'd love yeah, to meet you. You should know yeah. him. He's, uh, he's full of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, loves, he loves everything that you're talking about. Um, so much of the lineage here is, 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 is old beyond any religious label. And I don't want to call it animism either. Because it's a, I don't know, I see that more of as, as an sort of an anthropological kind of term to say, oh, yeah. Pejorative. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Um, but it's, it's so, you know, it's, it's very nature, nature based, and it's all about harmonizing the microcosm with the macrocosm through spirit. Yeah. And, um, that, you know, with some of the things, I mean, I've had women in hijabs do it with me. And like, it's, I mean, Indonesians, because actually that was their roots anyway. And there's, I remember one, one retreat I did was interesting. There was one and she was determined not to go into the temples. And by the end of it, she was, <laughs> she, <laughs> she couldn't was help herself. <laughs> and I just said, yeah, you know, your, your, your ancestor did this once upon a time. She's like, yeah, yeah I could feel that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, and, I, and, I, and I think that throughout the world it was done in, in maybe not so, such different ways. I was in England and went to Chalice Well and places like that and it, and it, you and could it feel, the, feel it. Yeah, yeah, I could feel that I could feel a similar thing to what I feel here yeah. and that the sort of revival of that sort of Celtic Druidic tradition. Mm. Have you been to the Borbador? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, my, um, Alex, my, my really, he's, he's like my brother um, and business partner and if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be teaching actually. He's the one who first talked me into it. He's on the committee, uh, oh, uh, Waisak. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's the, he was the official photographer for a few years on that. So mm -hmm. he's very attached to Borobudur. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and apparently there's a number of old Buddhist yes. sites in Sumatra too. That's exactly right. I was actually going to just suggest that. That was, that was the They're, they're not totally all excavated apparently, no. so just some of them. Some of them, are, yeah, and they've really pulled back on the, the Indonesian government for some reason. That was the golden age of the, the Buddhist kingdoms yeah. in Indonesia. Yeah, around Nilampung, yeah. Have you been there? I haven't been there. I've been to Sumatra, but Not to those I went to look for cinnamon <laughs> into the mountains. Yeah, but I, 
yeah, that was cool actually. Mm. Sumatra's a another, little bit different. Another... Mm, the wild, wild west. Wow. We've got the wild, wild east and the wild, wild west here. <laughs> <laughs> it, the, <laughs> the east is more wild. That's really wild, but yeah, God, they drive. They, they like to drive fast in, on these mountain roads in Sumatra. Um, you went looking for cinnamon mm, for medicinal use. I was making a, a mini documentary on various medicinal herbs, and we went to Gunung Krinci, the last. It's the last um, reserve where the Sumatran tigers still roam, and it's rainforests and it's a. A mountain and um, yeah it's where endemic cinnamon grows so we went in and I learned how to skin a cinnamon tree it's mm. interesting yeah yeah but those guys yeah they live out they live out in the jungle and harvest and cinnamon's interesting you cut the tree down and it grows back mm. by itself mm. you don't have to replant it wow. it's like a <laughs> ideal sustainable crop mm. for for healthcare professionals, I mean, we can do many, many different things. Yeah, I'm putting together another thing, um, more of a systematized way of looking at the cosmology of how I work and, and through the various um, journeys into healing, kind of expanding on, I, one of the things I've studied a lot is alchemy. One of the reasons is because it can actually be trans transplanted directly onto the Balinese cosmology and it fits. It's uncanny. I'm smiling because I'm writing a book on alchemy right yeah. now. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> there you go. It doesn't end There's the synergy. Always, <laughs> synergy is really? incredible. Alchemy. And the Tibetan alchemy. Yeah, yeah. Tibetan. yeah. yeah. yeah Does it work with the seven planets or is there a different... I'm actually using the, uh, the Kali Yuga system. Uh-huh. So the uh, okay the twenty five thousand year cycle of the yeah of the precession of the equinox yeah but yes wow. and the color chakra do you know the color yeah. chakra yeah so yeah the color chakra would be the alchemy that ties the the cosmos with your own subtle body yeah. interesting. Here. So this is Tulsi. Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah, Tulsi Krishna, the the dark Tulsi. Yeah, I decided to study naturopathy. I didn't even know what homeopathy was, and then I went to. Um, he got sick, and I went to my herbal medicine because I was really into herbs then. And I said, "What can I give him?" And and he was less than a year old. And she said, "Well, you can't give him herbs. He's too young. You'll have to go to homeopath." And I'm like, "What's oh. that?" Like, and so I looked up. I wanted, oh, I was still so funny how I remember myself. I was like, I need a homeopath who's actually a medical doctor. So I looked one up. <laughs> just to be safe. Yeah, yeah, just to be safe because I'm like, I don't know about the these Rubicon guys. Yet. <laughs> no, no. Well, even though, you know, I'd, I'd committed to studying and everything. And I went and it didn't work with this guy. And then I, I went back again. I said, oh, this is it's not working. I'm going to give him antibiotics. Um, <clears throat> and then I went to. And then she said, no, go to this man. And uh, Keith Avedisian was his name. And, and I'm like, okay, it didn't work, really. And then I said, okay, he's got one chance. <laughs> if this doesn't work, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, go to, barrel, I'm gonna study chamber. medicine, forget this rubbish. And I gave him one dose of the medicine. He got a bit of a fever, vomited mucus all perfect right you have to get it you fever. have to get it you have to get, you have to get a fever that's what that's one of the main things i teach people is do not suppress a fever unless it's life it's like, and, and it's, fever never killed anyone it's like the body warming itself to purify itself or detox itself. when you get a fever above oh i don't know fahrenheit it's 38 centigrade your body produces interferon that's the medic medication they give to AIDS patients. I mean, it's incredible. Um, so the suppression of fever is one of the biggest. It's one of the one of the biggest mistakes in treating children at home. It's what leads to the develop. It's what leads them to go on and after that fever get bronchitis and get pneumonia and stuff because their their immune system just doesn't kick in. Um, and then he woke up the next day and he was running around like. 
And the nothing happened. Ne- needed too, right? He had to get. He vomited the out. mucus out. It was like, it was exactly how it should have been. About how upside down everything is. All right, so we got tulsi. This is lemon balm and mint. We pop them in. Wow, that is really going. Wah, ni dong anu dong gede api ni dah. Gonna put some mulberry leaves in. Tarragon. When you is there any um, lemon dust? Reciprocity when you take something from the land here with it. Yes. You ever, like the, the Native Americans offer of tobacco before yeah. they take something. Yeah. Is that also done here? We we offer uh, a number of a number of different offerings. Ah, Pak Jero, Kidman. Biasane setiap hari di kebun selain canang, napi manten kita kaptur. So we give a we give the classic chanang offering. Then we put some. Uh, um, it's it's like a mini mandala made of flowers. Yeah, to represent the nine directions, including the the eight and the center, represented with different sodo. Yeah, and then every. Every morning, in every Balinese household, we do what's called a uh, bantan saiban or sodo, which is um, the first rice that's cooked is always offered first. And we do that on the on the garden as well. And sweets, cakes, sometimes the spirit, there's certain spirits on the land, uh, they like a little coffee and tobacco as well. We do tobacco. There's a lot of similarities with Native American here. We you like their tobacco yeah. too, the spirits, yeah. huh? Yeah. Spirits love tobacco. Would you like to try some of that? Yeah. Just nibble on it. I'll sometimes, um, you can stir fry it or just eat it raw. Mm-hmm. I think it's got a bit of, it's kind of mucilaginous. Very good for the digestive system. This is Javanese ginseng. Mm-hmm. And we use the roots in a lot of our formulas, but the leaves are are edible. Mm. But did your dad teach you? Where did where do you get yeah. your lin- like My your dad? Your dad taught you. Yeah. Yeah. And would your dad have had a brother or was his, there a couple of his? So. Here, I think we were speaking about it um, in the interview, the lineage is always through the family. So he, my uncle, so his older brother, was his teacher. Because my grandfather was already nearly 90 when my father was born. Oh, wow. When he was born? Yeah. He was... It's like two generations older. Yeah, yeah. He was a yogi. <laughs> was he a yogi? The 90 year old one? Yeah, 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 yeah. He could fly. Yeah. There's, so I nice. there's still men alive who, we have one, one of our family retainers who's, was with him since he was a little boy. He's now in his 80s. He, he, he's like, yeah, yeah. I used to fly I had an eyewitness. Him. I used to fly with him. Yeah, and my, and many members of the family saw him go over walls and like disappear. He could translocate. He could appear all the same ceremonies. stories that uh, Geshe Tenzin Zopa's Lama, the guy that was in the caves mm-hmm. in above Sum Valley yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. Same stories, yeah. same stories, and also that they would eat nothing but a special kind of medicinal pill. Interesting, uh, he got a lot of like a nettle, or I don't know, yeah, yes, yes. I and I'm obsessed with nettle, and I and it's not well known in Bali as a herb as a medicinal herb, except that my cousin, who's from my, he's my uncle's eldest son, he's a healer as well, and he uses it. And, and most Balinese are, what, you're using nettle? And we usually cut it and throw it away because it's annoying, but it's a deeply medicinal herb. It's one of the five universal herbs as well that grows everywhere in the world, yeah. 
you know, I, he was the elder of the palace of the royal family, you know, so he was very much as the figure of a Raja, but um, he, he was very, very spiritual. I mean, he, um, he was not a political one. He, Iba, where we were, was his, basically his palace. His hermitage. It was, there was no, definitely, there was almost nothing there. It was all jungle. And he would, he made a cave. The cave's there, I'll show it to you, to where he it. meditated. When he was imprisoned by the Dutch during, because our, our family were, were freedom fighters, um, they poisoned the food. And he knew that, obviously, with his, with his abilities. And, um, he didn't, eat, I think he ate moss. That's all he ate for three months. And in that state, he was just in meditation all the time. And he, he designed an entire temple while he was in that. And then when he got out, he, he said, um, said, I learned if somebody throws stones at you, you throw them, throw flowers back at them. And he then invited his captors for dinner <laughs> to say thank you. <laughs> So that was the kind of kind of man he was, and and Rabindranath Tagore was present at my great grandfather's cremation. It was during his um, tour of Asia, and he was. They they gave him the um, at the, uh, at the the cremation of a, ro uh, a member of the royal family. Um, is a very important part of it called the Nagabanda, which is a dragon and it's about the detachment from the material world and part of that ritual is the firing of a, a bow and arrow um, with a flower on the end not a not a not an arrow <laughs> uh, by the high priest and he was he was asked to do that you mentioned freedom fighters your family was a they were they they opposed colonialism yeah so they sided with the nationalists but a lot of royal families didn't because it was in their advantage to remain colonial because it was almost great. like on the take right? protected yeah, yeah yeah they were they were they provided military manpower and everything um, in return for for money but I, you know my grandfather was never really into money so <laughs> he was so he you wouldn't have ever met him then if no. he was that old so he passed away in 1960 63 i think just after gunung agung erupted and he made a pact because the king of karangasam had to flee because it was, i mean it was a huge eruption and he stayed with my grandfather and and my father told me that they made a pact to die together and he died my grandfather chose the day of his death and his time of death he died in full in full lotus position um and the king of Karangasam passed away and in a few days my grandfather he said he tried to he tried to die on a certain day but it didn't happen he had no pulse and he was clinically dead for three days and then he came came back and said ah oh, the portal's not open yet so and then uh, my father said he went out one day and went down to I think down to the spring or the river and walked back and said today's a good day and yeah the next morning they found him in in meditation position yeah so no pressure <laughs> well that's in your dna you know so there is a little bit there is a bit of pressure <laughs> so this is this spring is really the reason why i'm here <laughs> this was the catalyst the guide now would these steps be connected with the temple these are the steps to the to the spring and it is kind of a yeah it's a lot of the temples in Bali are often connected to a spring so it's sort of like um, the, the temple is almost like the masculine aspect and the spring is the feminine aspect mm. and I think we see that in a lot of places around the world um, I think Chartres is over a spring. That's a healing. That's right. Healing spring. Yeah. <clears throat> and I know in, in, in Glastonbury as well, there's the Tor and the Chalice Well and the White Spring. 
underneath it. It's really a... So this is it. This is the... So we have water that is coming out of here. And this is just rising out of the earth. It's... Um, and then there's water that's coming out directly from underneath this rock. Mm -hmm. And so this is... This water supplies all of those rice fields. They are one of the few places in Bali that never has an off season from rice planting because they have water all year round from it. This stream flows all the way down and feeds all of the rice, terrace. rice terraces in the village. What's up here? This is the temple. This is where we would do the water purification at this rock. Malukat? Malukat. A legend of it being moved across. And then when it was moved across by one of the, one of the ancestors here, it um, the water emerged and this water it said comes all the way from um, Lake Tamblingan which is on the other side of the mountains there it feeds this aquifer so you would bring your students down here for a water ceremony here and then we pray at the temple this one here yeah and it's a beautiful I mean, as you can feel, it's a very peaceful place. Um, is there a submersion component? Do you get submerged? Uh, what we usually do is we do the malukat, and then I let everybody go and find a place, and there is, um, and we do a water meditation where they can. There's an old tradition in Indonesia called kum kum. Kum kum. Yeah, which is. Um, water meditation submerged at least up to the mm. umbilicus a bit a bit higher usually or it can be all the way up to the neck I 
guess we started on this with like listening to the land and remembering mm -hmm. the land mm -hmm. and letting the land be the guru, letting the land be the yeah the teacher. Yeah. Exactly. And just getting out of the way. Yeah. Listening. Yes. Yeah, we we call it. Uh, I often say, you know, when when people find a piece of land or find somewhere they settle, it's like selexi alam, you know, like nature, natural selection, but not the Darwinian natural selection. <laughs> it's like n nature said, yes, let's let's do this. You can do it. Yeah, you have leave. But it's the listening part that's. A few years ago, I was talking to a Native American. I had so mm. many, uh, it was still the same debate, you know, not mm. settled. Mm -hmm. and I was chattering. Yeah. And he caught me. He yeah. caught me chattering and he said, just listen to me. Go out into the woods. Yeah. Find a tree. Mm. Sit down. Mm. And shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Exactly. <laughs> Right. He called me out. I was like in my head, like mumbo jumbo, and he's like, "Go out, find a tree, sit down, shut up, and you will discover everything that you need to know." Yeah, yeah. It's it's that's a that's one of the perennial wisdoms, isn't it? You can't argue with that one. Yeah, that's, that's what this place represents to me, actually. Somewhere we can really do that. You could technically do it anywhere, but I don't know. I just like doing it here. Well, I was talking to Geshe Tenzin Zopa about pilgrimage. He said, of mm. course, you can do pilgrimage everywhere. You mm. can go yeah. to the local bodega. Sure. But then other places are really, they have been touched. Mm. Like, mm. your family property sits on your grandfather's place of samadhi. Mm -hmm. And his father's. So And his father's. And you can feel <laughs> that. Yeah. So while it's yeah. all good to say, like, you can find it anywhere, yes, yeah. maybe also you got to respect. Yeah. There are special places, too, yeah. sites of profundity. Yes. And then nature has its own. I'm not mm. that familiar, so I... Mm. This is a new portal, you know, mm, like yeah. nature, plants, yeah. healing, yeah. medicine, yeah. Bali. Thank you. Thank so, you. So, thank uh, you for thank you so much for listening to your heart and and, and being here. Yeah, I felt there's been a deep connection today, especially. And then uh, and then we let nature unfold as it does. Mm. Mm. We got it all today. We got the rain, we got the sunset. <laughs> yeah. Good the tea, mist, a good brew, the fire. Thank you for listening to the Wisdom Keeper podcast. If you've enjoyed this presentation of sacred knowledge, kindly like, subscribe, review, and share our podcast and video series on YouTube with your network so that more people can benefit from these teachings and together we can create a brighter future. If you're interested in my online courses, our community membership, and pilgrimages I lead, consider visiting the Contemplative Studies program at gradualpath.com. Until we gather again, all best wishes.